To help understand how uniquely revolutionary the AVAPS mode is, let's compare it to another great mode, the ST mode. In the ST mode, IPAP and EPAP values are set here. The IPAP is set to manipulate and improve the patient's ventilation, while the EPAP control is adjusted to help improve the patient's oxygenation. The difference between the IPAP and EPAP is pressure support. In the example provided here, the pressure support given to the patient is 10 centimeters of water because IPAP of 14 minus the EPAP of 4 equals 10. In this mode, you have one IPAP setting, one EPAP setting, and therefore one fixed pressure support. In AVAPS, certain features are added. You still have the one EPAP control like in the ST mode. Rather than having one fixed IPAP setting, you now have the ability to set a range for your IPAP, a minimum and maximum IPAP setting. And the IPAP can change by itself within the minimum and maximum range. What this means is that because your IPAP can change within the range, the pressure support is no longer fixed. It changes as the IPAP changes within the minimum and maximum range. It does this based off a new setting added, tidal volume. In other words, the IPAP will adjust within the set range of pressure in order to deliver the desired, targeted tidal volume. On the Philips Respironix V60, you may notice there is no longer an IPAP setting here. Instead, the IPAP has been replaced with a targeted tidal volume setting. And rather than having one fixed IPAP value, you can now specify an IPAP range. In this example, the range is set to a minimum IPAP of 10 and a maximum of 20. In other words, we're allowing the IPAP to adjust itself between an IPAP of 10 to 20 in order to assure an average targeted tidal volume of 500 milliliters over one minute. This is what AVAPS stands for, Average Volume Assured Pressure Support. In this example, the V60 used an IPAP of 17, which is in our range, and the volume was very close to 500 milliliters. That's pretty impressive. Now, it's possible that not all breaths will be close to 500 like in this example. However, over the course of one minute, the machine will target an average tidal volume of 500 milliliters. And remember, this number isn't fixed like in the ST mode. It can adjust on its own within the specified range to accomplish the goal of volume delivery. In the ST mode, you can set a fixed IPAP and therefore a fixed pressure support. The tidal volume is a result of patient effort and the pressure support. In AVAPS, IPAP varies. The tidal volume will also vary, but the average tidal volume over the course of one minute will be targeted to what is set. So, which patients can benefit from AVAPS? It's for those non-acute patients who may not otherwise achieve sufficient tidal volume on their own. For example, patients with neuromuscular disorders, restrictive disorders, and obesity hypoventilation syndrome. They may not need frequent IPAP changes, but if they do need a changing IPAP in small increments, they will benefit from AVAPS. However, AVAPS should not be used when rapid IPAP adjustments are needed to achieve the desired tidal volume, as you should not expect to see an IPAP change of more than 2.5 centimeters of water within one minute. So don't use it on all patients, but do use it on the right patients. Remember, in chronic conditions, patients' lung compliance and effort may drop if the disease progresses. AVAPS mode can assist many patients in maintaining their tidal volume. In fact, it can assist many patients with chronic respiratory failure in need of ventilatory support. How does the AVAPS know which initial IPAP to set? In other words, even though you set a range, how does AVAPS know with which pressure to begin the first breath? And the answer is, AVAPS has a startup algorithm and will automatically select whichever value is higher. So sometimes out of these three methods, the minimum IPAP will be the highest value and therefore will be the initial IPAP setting. Or maybe this calculation here will produce the highest value out of the three choices. And so this value will be the initial IPAP. 
Or maybe this calculation here produces the highest value, and therefore it will be the initial IPAP setting. The good news is that you do not have to calculate and determine the higher value. AVAPS automatically selects the highest one of the three and institutes that IPAP as the initial IPAP setting. Now that's really intelligent! Now you should have a better understanding of how AVAPS works and how you can use it to adjust to your patient's needs. Thanks for watching.